All right, so Robert, listen, let's uh, let's get into this. And like I was just telling you off air, I'm um, been looking forward to this conversation for quite some time because I think you've got an awesome journey and a great story. And listen, if you're listening or watching this podcast, get ready to take notes, my friend, because uh, Robert, you and I are going to get into the weeds of things. And so just for context, just tell people uh, where you sell real estate, how long you've been doing it. Yeah, so I am in the Metro Detroit market, Brandon's market, guys. Uh, I've been in real estate. My my two-year anniversary was the beginning of March. So this is my third year entering into my third year of real estate. I love it. So let's let's work our way kind of backwards. Uh, re- recently, kind of walk through what things have looked like from a production standpoint. We're going to work through lead sources, schedule, what you've learned, and then we'll get into some of the things that have, that you've changed recently to get some of these results. So let's get into what do things look like right now? How many listings are you taking per month? And, and we'll break all that down first off. Yeah, so uh, I wrote some numbers down here. So this month, I think I've already taken three or four. Um, let, in February, I took 12. Or sorry, since February, I've taken 12. I believe in February, I took eight. And then I've taken four this far this month. Uh, expecting a couple more. When you count up the current volume I have either listed, under contract, or coming soon to the market, it comes out to about $3 million in volume in listings. Yeah, I love it. So let's get into, uh, we'll break down how you're doing that in a second, but it wasn't always like that, right? Like the success that you, you're having now wasn't always like that. And so I want to I I go way back to the beginning and talk about how, how you approach this real estate sales business from a lead generation standpoint, some of the things you failed on, some of the things you tried, and then we'll get into uh, what you've done recently to get some of these results you're getting right now. So when you first got started for the first couple of years, how were you approaching lead generation? Good question. Uh, the, the best answer would probably be I wasn't, right? <laughs> um, just like most agents, you know, you sit there, you, you kind of hang out on social media, you hang out around the office, you wait for your phone to ring. And I learned very quickly, you know, I didn't, I got into real estate when I quit my job, when I got into, I had no money. So I had to work two jobs. I quit my job, paying me a hundred thousand dollars a year. So then I drove Uber and got into real estate at the same time. So I learned very quickly that it's not that easy, right? I had to make some money. So I went from a passive agent to an active agent. So in the beginning it was my, 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 uh, my lead generation was just wait on my phone to ring. Right. (laughs) That's right. So you, so So you had a, I kind of scaled it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sit, just sit back and wait. I mean, that's what most people do. And they'll wait for their three or four deals a year. And that's kind of their career in a nutshell, right? And, and some people, that's okay. I mean, actually, quite frankly, most that's most of our industry. There was a, a good research uh, report that just came out. 72% of our industry makes up the agent we just talked about. The passive agent who just kind of waits for three or four deals to come in. But you got into this for the high income opportunity. I mean, that's why you got into selling one of the most expensive products in the world, which is real estate. So then you started to take this proactive approach towards lead generation. Um, You and I had met how long ago? How long have we been working together now? So we originally met well over a year ago. Yeah. Um, I joined your program and I didn't really believe in myself. I was still half foot in, inbound, half foot out. Kind of like doing Zillow, trying everything, man. Trying the easiest, the the least resistant stuff. And I didn't believe in it. You yeah. know, so we've been working together for a little over a year, but really dialed in. Now I'd say we're about, I think, six months in of actually, I mean, you see my face two, three times a week and I'm always talking to you, right? So that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so now let's get into how you're getting the results. So first off, your business model is you've gone from a, a sit back and a wait to try a bunch of different things to really focus on your outbound proactive lead generation. That is the model in which you focus on today, correct? Correct. Yeah. Or is there anything else that you're doing outside of that that you think is contributing to the results or is it all just based on that model? And then we'll break down what that model means for the audience. I would say pretty much outbound being, I mean, 90% of it's outbound cold calling. I'd say the other 10% might come from social media and reaching out to my sphere which is part of my outbound approach. But yeah, mainly outbound, like pretty okay. much almost hundred percent. Okay. So let's get into that. So talk to us about um, lead sources, which, which lead sources are you finding the most success with right now? Yeah. So I, I looked back at the eight, so I've signed 18 listings since I've joined your program six months ago. 
Yeah. Uh, majority of which came the last month and a half. But when I scaled it, it looked like eight expires, five FISBO, two circle, and three SOI. So majority of it coming from expired and FISBO. Got it. Got it. And so right now, how much, give the audience an idea of how much prospecting you actually do on a daily basis. So guys, um, there's, there's no, you are not getting to me. You cannot call me unless it's emergency or you're my mother, mother or father from 740 to 11 bare minimum. And then some days I'll go into, and that's, and that's outbound direct 11 to 12 is the lead follow-up. So you're talking four hours there four plus hours there. And then if I don't have anything in the afternoon, I'll throw another hour to sometimes three in there in yeah. the afternoon, just depending, you know, if I don't have an appointment. Yeah. So speak to the audience about how, how important volume is in this equation. Cause where there's, there's a couple parts to how, how do you actually succeed with an outbound business model? And the most important is volume, right? And so how much, you know, speak to how important that is and maybe quantify this for people. How many people are you actually talking to on a daily basis about listing their properties? Yeah. So like this morning, um, I prospected from 740 to 11 sharp because I had this meeting. So I had to prioritize my time blocks. But that three hour and 20 minute chunk, I called 44 count or had 44 conversations. 44 so, people. I mean, and, and that's that's the thing, right? You're talking to a lot of people because that's what we need. And if we're going to list property in, in, in high volume to sit back and wait and have a couple of conversations a month, just ain't going to do it. So, you know, you're in any given week. Are you typically talking to 30, 40 people per day or 150, 175, yeah. 200 people per week? Yeah, you're, you're talking bare minimum 200 probably per week. When you're counting weekends and everything, yeah, for sure, 200. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's massive. So that's about, we'll call it 800 conversations every 30 days. Break down just the average month's results based on that. So how many appointments are you, are you setting, are you going on, and, and how many listings moving forward will that yield you? So to scale it, I believe you need about six months worth of data. Um, but the, if I if I take my last six months, right, you got fresh, no experience to highly skilled where I'm at now. So like as of late, it's looked a lot better. So I'll give you a perfect example. In January, and I know we're going to unpack this a little bit, but in January, I had 800 conversations, 801 to be exact. It generated me 81 leads. I set 24 appointments during that month. Got it. Yeah. So um, last month, or sorry, February to now, I should have tracked last month individually, but February to year to dare to right now, we got 564 combos, 51 leads, 30 appointments set, 22 met, 12 signed. It's amazing. Um, just I mean, to that, kind of break everything down. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Right. And so let's get into, so that's volume, right? So you, everyone listening to the show, Robert just went through volume. You know what I mean? He's having lots of conversation. You're generating a ton of leads. You're setting a ton of appointments. You're going on a lot of these appointments. So you're putting in the work. Talk to us about the skills piece, because you and I, I think had some really good conversations lately because it's one thing to get volume, right? But just because you're making the calls, you're making the dials, you're having the contacts, doesn't mean that you'd be setting appointments, doesn't mean you'd be going on the appointments and let alone uh, taking the actual listing. So can you break down first, let's first talk about skills over the phone, then we'll get into the skills at the actual presentation. So on the phone specifically, what part of what you've learned is helping you with these conversations over the telephone? So it's, it, I would say it's twofold. Number one's gonna be guys, you have to do the repetitions, right? You have to be there every day. And I don't mean just, calling 20 people. I mean, guys, I'm, I'm role playing from 7 a.m. sharp to 740 sharp on the dialer to 11 o'clock sharp every day. If I'm sick, that's the only time you're going to see me miss it. Or if I'm just not here, if I'm out of town. Right. Um, and with that being said, that that's the first part, like is just doing the work and just practicing your skills. The other part that really changed, I was telling you the other day in our, in our uh, boardroom meeting was, um, you said something to me, it changed my, it changed my whole perspective. It, it, it literally, if you look at my business and my numbers, I took a 180 turn, right? So um, what it was, was we were talking and I'm like, Brandon, I'm doing all this damn work. I'm sending all these appointments, man. Where, where am I going wrong? I know I'm skilled on the phone and I'll never forget it. You told me, listen, man, you're, you're just setting all the appointments with all the people that the highly skilled prospectors are just passing up on. And I was like, what does he mean by that? And you're like, what I mean by it is when we're on these phones, 
if we want, if the goal was to set appointments, I'd probably be a gold medalist, right? That's if that right. was the goal, it's not just setting appointments. We're not looking for that. We're looking for closable transactions. So now when I'm on the phone, you have to almost fit my criteria to even see me at your house. It's like, I used to be the opposite where it's like, That's please right. let me in, please let me in. Now it's tell me, you have to almost sell me on your pain to get me in your front door. I need to know that you're serious before I waste my time because I learned you can set a lot of bad appointments and turn off a lot of good ones because you fill your schedule with a bunch of junk, right? So that's right. I learned very quickly. And when you said that to me, I was like, wow, I am filling my schedule with junk and that's my issue. Yeah, it's a different mindset, right? I think I think at some point we get this kind of mirage of hope going on or you and I, we call it happy years, right? It's like you get all excited for, for setting this appointment and we lose what the focus is. The focus is we're in the business of listing and selling property. We're not in the business of, you know, um, generating leads. We're not in the business of just setting appointments. I mean, that doesn't pay that well, right? As you know. And so we're in the business of actually listing and selling property. And so you've shifted your mindset from, and I don't know this would be the case for you, but a lot of agents are just trying to check the box. Like, oh, I did my contacts. I set this appointment. And it's like, wait a minute, you're forgetting the point. The point is to go on appointments where you're talking about the listing and the selling of homes. Because you went, I think it was in January, you had set 24 appointments. How many did you go on in January? I love that you brought that up because that's exactly what I was doing. It was 40, con just so you guys, just to give the audience context, it was 40 contacts a day or die was like my motto. I yeah. was doing it regardless. Now it's having more effective conversations. So January was 24 sets. Six met, and out of the six met from cold calling, zero signed. Wow! So that was a nasty month, and it was, and it was really. I got into a bad mindset of just trying to do contacts and just trying to, just really trying to set appointments. Which, like you said, it, it doesn't pay well. But not only does it not pay well, it actually costs you money because listing appointments, packets, time, and yeah. gas. I mean, that stuff adds up, right? So, so it was a massive difference. If we look, if we just break down the numbers that you just gave us. You're having actually less conversations now, but getting way more results. So since January, so we're talking about all of February, we're shooting this on the 12th day of March. You got uh, all of February and a couple weeks in March, you've only talked to 564 people. You've set, you got 51 leads. You set 30 appointments, gone on 22, taken 12. So you've actually had less conversations because it's not about contacts, right? It's about the quality of conversation. So yep. on the phone, is there a script or is there a skill set that uh, that you go through that helps you set better, higher quality appointments that the audience could learn from? Like maybe disqualifying, maybe, you know, is there a way in which you're having these conversations that helps you lead to results? Yeah, I could really nerd out over that topic because you've yeah. taught me so much and I'm, um, and you know, I'm a student to the game. So I really, really honed in on like what an actual conversation is, is supposed to look like. But what it, what it really boils down to is what you teach, which is DART, right? Do they have the desire to sell? Yes or no. Okay, they do. Well, can they sell? Okay, they can. And then the biggest piece for me is the reason. What's the reason they're selling? And then when I go reason, typically what you'll see, if you, if you were to listen to my conversations now, it's when I go reason, I go, it goes D-A-R-D-T, which is D-A-R reason, dig. Because I'm going to dig at that reason, then I'm going to find out the timeline, then I'm going to set the appointment. So it's DART. It's, it's desire, ability, reason, timeline. And I really want to dig at that reason and really try to figure out if it's an option for him to keep it. Because smart. if it is, if it is, it's not really worth my time. I, I'm not looking for that. Yeah, so spot on. I mean, hopefully you guys all wrote that down. You can go back, rewind what he just said. He has, Robert, you've become, you become a master of discovering uh, motivation, people's pain points, which then lead you to the right places because you were doing all of the right things, just not that. And so you were just, you were setting the amount of appointments we needed you to set just with the wrong people. That's all. That's all it was. That's it. That's it. So, so at the listing appointment now, walk us through, I had asked uh, the community a question the other day of what you've learned as far as the listing presentation goes, what's helping you win the business? Like once you get there, once you have your opportunity to communicate with somebody who is the right person, they have motivation to sell, what part of the listing presentation has been most beneficial for you? Yeah, so the first one, um, and I think I put it in the group, would be I, I, I welcome them to tell me the truth. And that's, that's part right. of what you teach is when I'm setting the agenda of what we're going to go through today, 
I'm not bombarding them and, and pressuring them into signing with me. I'm actually leaving it wide open for them to tell me no. And I actually welcome it a few times during my presentation. Guys, if you don't feel comfortable with me, you can tell me you're not going to hurt my feelings. I promise, you know, I can handle it. Yeah. And then the other part of that would be our value prop, you know, would be telling them what they already know, <laughs> right? Which is sure. they can fire me at any time. And they know that they, you know, they, they, they don't know that they, that it's able for them to do it. I just, we know that they can do it. Right. But I just tell them and it, it really separates me from my competition. Like I'll give you a perfect example. The listing I took yesterday, um, she interviewed eight other agents mm. and I feel that piece, me, me welcoming her to tell me the truth and, and, and not work for me if she doesn't want to. And then me, um, welcoming the fact that she can get rid of me if I don't do my job. I think that I just feel in my heart of hearts that that's what separates me from my competition. And I yeah. could be wrong. No, no, you're spot on because what's happening is a, when you communicate by inviting prospects to tell you the truth, or if they're, if they don't want to work with you, that it's okay. It, it separates their anxiety of feeling like you're going to try to pressure them into doing something, or you're going to try to sell them. And this is a conversation about the truth. And if the result of this conversation means that we don't work together, that that is an acceptable outcome versus the needy salesperson who doesn't even fathom inviting the prospect to tell them the truth ends up having the prospect at the listing appointment that is full in defense mode. They have to guard themselves because it's like this person can't handle the truth. And that's why they get objections like, well, we'll think about it, which means F off. I never <laughs> want to hear from you again, but they don't want to hear it. That's number one. And then number two, is you've created a world in these presentations where the prospect feels confident to hire you because you're one of the only agents who is willing to be held accountable to the fact that after they've signed the listing contract, what would happen in a world if you don't show up and do what it is that you say you're going to do where other agents don't dare to talk about that because most of them are all talk and no show. They talk a big game and then when they get the listing, they fail miserably. So you're actually bringing that fact up, which makes the prospect feel absolutely 100% uh, confident in hiring you. The other thing I would tell you from a coaching perspective is your confidence, right? People will hear that on this podcast, how confident you are, how you show up as a professional, which also helps you in the game. So the other part I want to talk about inside of the, the business breakdown how important of a role has lead follow-up been in your business? Yeah, man, massive, massive. So when, when I first started, it was this all or nothing mentality. And you told me, dude, you just have no idea. You know, I, I remember having a one-on-one -on -one call with you and you going, dude, if you just keep making contacts and keep following up, you're going to have so much business. You're not going to know what to do with it. And I'm not to that point yet, but I'm feeling myself getting there. So I'll give you a perfect example. Out of the 18 that I've signed from the time we started working together, or I guess since we started tracking on CSU is what I went back on. Yeah. That's where I worked at. Um, 11, of them, 11 of those listings were first calls, but seven of them were follow-ups, rather it be one touch, two touch, 10 touch, 20 touch. I mean, we get to 40 touches, right? Before yeah. we before we even get a sit down. I mean, there's, there's been times I've sent 40, 50 calls, texts, voicemails, or emails to people before they let me sit down with them. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's, it, it's like 40% of your business right now. Yeah. Right. And so that's how we see an agent scale because you're going to keep doing your thing on the first contact because your skill set. But then over time, you're building this massive pipeline. Right. And so as you look forward, uh, for instance, what is your goal moving forward now with the new skill set that you have in, in place? What is, if you were to project out from here to the end of the year and then into 2025, what are some of the goals that you're thinking about? Um, you're saying like volume units, everything wise. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable to say I can take two listings a week for the rest of time. If nothing else changes, that's why I, that my confidence is there. Yeah. Um, so looking towards the next between now and, and one year from today, I would have hoped to at least have taken 100 new listings. Yeah. And so I guess the point is, and, and I know you can, you are absolutely a hundred listing uh, producing agent. What I'm saying is that 40 to 45 of those will come out of the pipeline, right? Where otherwise you'd be stuck at that 50 transactions number. So a hundred listings, if you sell, I don't know, 80 of those, what type of income will that represent just so the audience can get some context of, of the type of income that's possible through this model? Um, do you have a calculator? You have to do 80 times my volume, which is 250,000 is my average volume. Yeah. And then multiply it. And let's just say you multiply it by 0 0.29 being generous. Cause most of my listings are 3%, 99% of them are. 
Yeah. Um, but I mean, you might even, get that one off. Yeah. Even, even at two and a half percent commission on 80 deals is 500 K a year. At least. Yeah. 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 At least yeah, a half sure. million dollars in income. And in Metro Detroit, yeah. I know what kind of lifestyle that lives. So, you know, as you look back and you reflect, you know, what were, what would some of the things you'd be doing differently if you could go back three years and start all over again? The second, I'll be honest. I mean, this is the people might think this is scripted or, or, or BS, but I'll, I swear to God, you know, God is my witness. The first thing I would do would be called Brian Morenin. I'm not joking. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, I'm, I'm being so serious. I would sign up with you. I'd actually listen. I'd swallow my ego. I'd get around winners and I'd learn as much as I possibly could. And I'd hit the phones as hard as I could mm. for sure. Yeah. It's funny you bring up the ego thing, right? So where, where do you think that comes from with yourself and others where they don't want to surrender to the fact that they don't know it all? Where does that come from? I think, um, I think like most realtors are confident people. We get into this business because we're confident as people. And then we feel like we know it all. And I think most people learn really quick in this business that we don't know shit, right? I mean, I still don't. I know maybe 1% of the business, right? Sure. And, I'm, and I've done a lot of deals. And it's yeah. like, I still am learning every single day. I don't know where it comes from, to be honest, other than we have this false hope. And I think a lot of it to do with it, Brandon, is getting around the wrong people. Mm. Like, there's a lot of people in this business that are like, no, it's a down market. No, it's a bad time. It's listen, guys, it's what you make it. That's the yeah. truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, one thing too, I, I just want to ask you is, you know, outside of call it for sale by owners and expireds, is there a lead source that you're excited about where that will allow you to build that future pipeline that you and I have been talking about? Is there, are there calls that you make outside of getting your now business that you're like, I can't wait to this part of my day because I know what it means in the future. Uh, if, if so, what is it? Yeah, it's, um, it's what you teach. It's, it's neighborhood. It's neighborhood, nur it's neighborhood nurture kind of circle yeah. dialing because I can pick where I want to work. Like for That's me, right. for me, I want to work in like Northville, you know, Northville, it's a nice market. That's where I would love to serve because it's higher price point, but it's not quite super luxury right. where you don't have to worry about it not selling. So yeah. that's kind of the area that I've been honing in on. And it's, it's a slower game. It really yeah. is. And are you, so with that, how many contacts are you having just focusing on the markets you want to serve? Are you doing five or 10 contacts there a day? Yeah, typically. So typically my day broke break down is hit all the fresh and then go into old expired slash old FISBO. And then once that is wrapped up, I have two circle areas, one down river, one in Northville. I usually do 10 to 15 contacts a day with those. And are you able to get a lead a day out of that activity? Not an appointment, yeah, but a lead a day? Yeah. It's not always because those are hit or miss. But yeah, you're typically seeing one. If I do 20 contacts in those areas, you're typically at least seeing one lead a day. Yeah so, yeah. so it's usually a 5% conversion with circle prospecting where it's a 10% conversion with FISBO expired. So that makes a lot of sense. It's 20 conversations audience to one lead with circle prospecting. It's 10 conversations to one lead with FISBOs and expireds. So um Last thing for me, walk us through just your, your daily schedule. Let's go. I know you've kind of pieced it together here or there, but walk us through the time you wake up to the time you go home. What does that day look like? Yeah. So on a typical day, I wake up 4.30 on the dot. I get up, I get rolling, I get to the gym at five, and then I work out till about 6, 6, 6.15, come straight home, shower. And then I sit down, I read my goals and pray from 6.45 to 7 so I can really understand and Kind of see what's in front of me, right? And reflect sure. on what I'm trying to do here. And then 7 to 740 is role play. 740 to 11 is strictly on the phones. 11 to 1110 is confirming my daily appointments. 1110 to 1130 is serving or 11, 1110 to 12 is really kind of caring for my clients. I open yep. every file every day. Even if there's nothing to do, I just look at it. And then 12 to 1 is lunch. Anything after one's appointment. If I don't have any appointments, I'm either training to get better, calling more people or doing something. I can't sit down and not work on my business Yeah, because and then I usually try to get in bed by nine. My wife's a little bit, you know, uneasy right now. Cause right now all I do is work. It's, it's right now it's super work balanced, but you know, I'm trying to get somewhere. Right. So my, my schedule is right. pretty much work all day, every day until nine, go to bed at nine, wake up at four 30, right back to it. Yeah. I mean, it's structured, it's disciplined, it's focused. And now the only thing we need is time, right? Because a year from now, we have you back on the show. You, you, you I, I truly believe this. You're the next guy 
the next agent inside of our world that gets to that hundred deals and life looks a lot different at that point you know when you you have a, a support system around you you've got some support staff uh your income is at a level that makes you a one percenter because you're coming from a world where you're making six figures but to get to multiple six or even seven figures puts puts lifestyle in a completely different perspective so listen man i appreciate uh i just gotta got a page of notes right so i appreciate you doing this any last words of wisdom or guidance for the person who maybe is just getting licensed they're just starting off robert they're filled with maybe some fear or, or some doubt they know they need to be outbound prospecting they know they need to play offense uh, is there any words of wisdom you could leave that person to get them into action 100 percent um guys and i learned this from brandon uh, it's very simple it's, it's kind of what started me into really doing what i'm doing is you can either do more be better or be different when you first start it's just doing more so you have to i know it's going to suck hitting the phone start with five then do 10 then do 20 before you know it, you'll do 40 50 contacts a day and doing that will get you better That's and then right. you can be different so that would be my advice is just right now do more if yeah. you're working six hours a day start working 12 if you want to be successful yeah, it's great advice. Well, Robert, appreciate you. Good luck on your appointment, and uh, we'll talk Thanks to you soon, all right? All right, my friend. I'll talk to you. Yep, see ya.